Okay. Um, this is how to increase the ability and FPS for Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 is, to be frank, an unstable game on PC. Um, this, this is how to increase the stability and overall frame rate of the game. If you watched the video where I did this for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, then you already know the steps, except for on NVIDIA, there's an extra step to avoid consistent crashing. So we're going to be doing that. So to proof of concept to show the um, lack of stability here playing the game where I saw it 120 FPS because I have locked the game. You're going to check my settings here, which is basically the max except for physics is on low because that's just overall kills frame rate but for sake of this video i will uncap the frame rate as you can see uh, the overall frame rate might not go up but the stability will and i'll show you what i mean so there's a two areas that i know of that will destroy stability which is the area nexus bone yards if you go to the area nexus bone yard from here and you go over here we can get the frame rate to drop pretty badly by looking over in that direction As you can see, the frame rate on my 3070 Ti Ryzen 5 5600X is not ideal. You know, you pay a lot of money for a really good GPU, and then you're playing an old game and getting frame rates like this. It's not a very satisfying experience. So, I'm sure you guys have to increase stability where it will not dip as low as sometimes 60 frames per second. The other area it does this in and which is very very obvious and is thousand cuts so we'll go to thousand cuts real quick and i'll show how bad it can get in thousand cuts go thousand cuts who are my my cpu temps over it's very hard to get them as low as they are it was a lot worse but Sometimes it's mostly because I've uncapped the frame rate, but normally it's pretty steady. But here we go, as you can see, we're already getting some some pretty bad dips. And, like, GPU's not being used too much. CPU usage is, is low, which is good. But the main reason the frame rate is so low is because of the low GPU usage, which is not much you can really do to increase that. So, but what, what really shows it tanking is once you get over to this area over here. Here you go. This is basically as bad as it can get, which is right here. Um, and way to not, if you don't follow this tutorial, the one way to kind of fix it is to lower the view distance to medium or low, which will overall increase frame rate. But if you want to play max things like me on your beefy machine, so you want that ultra high so you can see absolutely everything and, and feel good about your computer. Give me low as 50s, oh my god. So this is what you're gonna do. So go ahead and quit your game. Um, if you've seen my Assassin's Creed Odyssey tutorial, then you know exactly where this is going. But we're gonna quit to the desktop. Here we are, we're on our desktop. So we're going to be um, going into our browser. Let me just close my tabs and stuff. All right. All right, this is what we're gonna wanna do. We're gonna search DXVK. And we're going to go to the first link, which should be a GitHub link. It should look like this. Dwight Suchin, TXVK. Go ahead and click on it. Go to Releases. Click this. This will be in the description. I'll just leave it in the description. But I'm going to be downloading the most recent. For me, currently, the most recent is 2.1. But if the most recent review is like 2.2, 2.3, just download it. And it should all work just fine. If it doesn't work for some odd reason, you can try 2.1, which is what's being used. Currently, in this video, as you see, I already downloaded it before. We're going to go and open it with 7-Zips, you know, WinRAR, whatever you use. And we're going to go to Steam. We're going to right click Borderlands 2. We're going to manage browse local files, which should open up the local files. Over here, here we go. It should open this up. We're going to want to go to Binaries, Win32, which will take you here. Um, 
basically you need to find where the exe is, which is right here. So this is where we want to be. So go ahead and open up the DXVK um, zip, open up the .tar, which should bring you into here, open up the DXVK 2.1 folder. And you can do this for many different kind of games. Um, some games playing won't work, some games it'll help, some games it won't. Um, now this is a 32-bit application. If you did the 64, it will do nothing and nothing will change. And the game will run the same and it, nothing. But this is a 32-bit application. So make sure whatever game you might be doing this for, which for instance is 32-bit, so open a 32-bit folder. Now you need to know which API it's running. If it's running DirectX 11, 10, or 9, then you're good. This will work. If it's running DirectX 12, then there's no way to do this. DirectX 12 and Vulkan are pretty similar. Therefore, there's no way to just do it. So, whatever. This is a DirectX 9 game. So, drag the D3D9 file into this folder. And then drag the DXGI.dll into this folder. And now we're done with that. So, we can close it now. There's an extra step. If you're on NVIDIA, there's an extra step to get the game to open every single time without crashing. Because if we try to launch it normally, it's probably, it's like a 90% chance that it will crash. It didn't crash that time. But usually, whenever you try to open it, wait for it to close, it will crash. It looks like right now it's cooperating with me. But normally, this launcher here will crash. If you try opening the game and the launcher crashes, when you run AMD or NVIDIA, I feel like it's only an NVIDIA problem because AMD is just really good with this whole TXVK stuff. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to fix this as well. So you're going to want to go down here on your Steam, go to the plus add game down here, do add non-Steam game, browse. You're going to go to where your Borderlands 2 is at. For me, it's local disk C, program files, x86, Steam, Steam maps, common, Borderlands 2, binaries, 132, find. This folder where we put the two files just now. And you want to click on this Borderlands 2, not the launcher, but Borderlands 2 application. And go ahead and open that up, and then click Add Selective Programs right here. Um, doing that, we'll put the game all the way down here. So go ahead and sort by recent activity and ready to play games, and it'll be at the very bottom right here. Uh, let's go ahead and right click it and just rename it to BL2DXV. Okay, that's what I have to call it. Um, there is another way to do this, which is to simply redirect the Borderlands 2 EXE, this one, to this. Um, it doesn't really matter um, if you do want to try to get the launcher to work to change some settings. Um, then you can just keep launching until it works, which is why I have it like this. But there is another way to do it, but personally I don't know how to do it because I haven't tried it and I don't want to test it right now. But yeah, if you just do this, then whenever you launch the game, it will it will still show you're playing Borderlands 2. It will still launch this version, so your 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 play time will go up and everything. So it's not a big deal. So now we're going to launch the BL2 DXVK, which will straight up skip the launcher and launch straight into the splash, which is launch straight into the game. Um, let's go. I once again just realized that I forgot the step that I forgot the last video, but you want to go to your Steam and then settings. Go down to shader pre-caching and make sure that these two are checked. I always forget that, but just make sure that this is checked so that Vulcan stuff can be cached, shaders can be saved. So it's not a big deal. So go ahead and make sure these are checked. If these were not checked, just going to check them and restart your game. It's on me, my bad. I'm wasting your time. So go ahead and zone open up the game and everything so once you get in here it's going to be it might be for me i'm pretty sure that the shares are already cached but once you get in it's probably going to be laggy you're going to be freezing a bit you're going to be stuttering it's not a big deal that's the shaders caching if you've ever played a game with shader caching you'll know what i mean the game like if you played any game emulated using shaders such as the switch or wii u emulators they use shader caching so it's going to like stutter and stuff same with ps3 emulation Okay, now we're in the game. Um, looks like most of my shares are already cached. So as you can see, we already got higher frame rates, but also my temps, your temps will be higher because it's going to make your GPU start working a little harder and, and overall get your computer working more. So your temps will go up a bit. So if temps are a problem for you, I don't know if I can recommend this to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the spot where you saw where it can tip as low as 52 frames per second. This works on most games. Uh, a lot of games with anti-cheat, it might not work 
because it's just not too happy with stuff like that. Uh, games like Insurgency Sandstorm will not work. As you can see, while it's not perfect, we didn't have to change any settings to change the graphics. Everything looks exactly the same, and the frame rate is really good. Aiming in, like, frame rates don't dip too low, like 80, way better than 52. You know, I, I, I feel good about my frame rate right now. It's up as low as 80, it's like, which is pretty damn good. Yeah. It's looking all good. So yeah, that is the my personal fix that I use for some games when I have stability issues. So um, another thing you use is lower settings, turn off physics. You can also turn off the the black outer lines. So you can just search it up on the internet. It's not too hard. Um, which, but this will overall increase your GPU's um, percentage usage and everything. As you see, my my CPU temps are going way up. Um, if yours are going away, I recommend you just cap your frame rate at 120 for one high FPS. But you don't want your machine to literally kill itself. As you see, my temps go way down. So I recommend you cap your game at 120 because if, because you are uncapped, then you're probably going to want to cap it now because you will be cranking 200 FPS sometimes, and that's just you, you don't need to be pushing out FPS like that. Even if you have a fucking 44 monitor like me, it's not a big deal. So, um, did you watch this video? If it helped click like um i have one exactly the same tutorial for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, this works for all kinds of other games um, if you have a game you'd like to see me do it on for instance and it has like some sort of crashing issue i can look into it and then maybe just reply to your comment being like this is why it doesn't work because some games that just flat out won't work if it has anti-cheat it's like a throw up near 50 50 chance you know flick of the coin whether or not it will actually work um, but most games work. Water games like this tend to work. So I recommend it. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you.